Yeah, hi. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for your late, out-of-date NXT and AEW Dynamite review. The Tuesday Night War has commenced. Um, why I didn't do the review Tuesday night? Because I... So, let me be honest with you. There's too much wrestling in this world nowadays. But it's not just that. It's too much wrestling that sucks. I don't want to watch too much wrestling. You know, I'm getting older. And I want to be more outgoing and doing stuff. So, I was just hanging out with buddies. <laughs> you know, honestly. But I did keep track with AEW and NXT. And what I'm seeing is, like, who the fuck really cares? You know? And, and this is, again, you're having a developmental show that's NXT... But again, they're trying to make it, you know, they're trying to make it big because it's on the CW, and they have freaking the main roster stars on the show. Uh, other than that, you know, uh, but like, it's whatever. I mean, it's whatever. Um, AEW, I cannot believe how like AEW, like last year. WWE, like, how bad had WWE, uh, AEW gotten that, like, AEW, that WWE did not even treat this NXT show, by the way. They did not treat this NXT show like how they did last year when they were battling AEW. It's like, the bar of NXT trying to be this big promotion has really declined. And it's like, what does that freaking tell you? Like, how much interest there's AEW? Apparently, AEW... Got like 300 something thousand people that watch the show. How bad have you gone? And you can't just say it's because that, oh, you know, not everybody remembered the show's on and, you know, the, the day moved. Maybe because just because the day moved doesn't mean that they didn't even mention. Didn't they mention? For people who are AEW fans, they mentioned, I think, countless times that the show was going to be on Tuesdays this week. Title Tuesday. And guess what? I, guess what with this Title Tuesday? Guess what? No title is on the fucking line! So you are giving bullshit of what you're saying on Title Tuesday. Last year, I remember when they did Title Tuesdays. Guess what? Barely any titles was on the line last year. This year, no titles is on the fucking line. What the fuck are we doing here? You know? Nonsensical booking with AEW. And... There's a pay-per-view on Saturday. There's a pay-per-view. And nobody cares. I don't care. I don't think anybody really cares. I don't think AEW fans care. Some people are pretend like, you know, Tony Khan will prevail with his good matches. Again, they may be good matches to appeal to smarty wrestling fans with great feats of athleticism and flippy bullshit or whatever and all this indie shit. But how does that make good writing? How does that make any, any intriguement? And how does that make many money, really? You know what I mean? Like, it's really shit television. Just because it's matches doesn't mean it, the show will be good based on just matches alone. You know what I mean? You need stories. You need characters. That's how you're going to keep people watching. Just to watch good matches. Like, what makes that different than a fucking in the independent promotion? That's what AEW has honestly became. It's just a lyric. I mean, it always has honestly been presented a glorified indie promotion. But people are just starting to realize this this shit sucks. This is just a glorified indie promotion or they stop they stop giving this shit a chance. They finally spark to these people that I'm not wasting my time to watch this shit. It's been already You know how the pe people been saying, "Just give it time. It's only been a year, bull whatever." Guess what? It's been already five fucking years. And people have woken up to understand that AEW is just not worth it. Why, and why do you watch AEW when you can watch the same shit transpiring in WWE anyways? So, uh, because really, WWE is kind of just the same shit with AEW anyways. You know? It just, they're kind of less indie. But in a weird sense, they still have the brain muscles to know that, okay... Glorified indie shit is not going to really make the show really that good. Like, we'll still give what the indie fans want, but we know how to pace themselves, and we know that we're going to still make some money. Because WWE, 
as much as I crap on WWE, at least they still understand. It just, the thing is, and I think this is what I, I will say, and this is like a hidden agenda with Triple H. He knows that this shit doesn't draw, but he doesn't care because he, he, he sadly knows that people are still going to watch. He's still going to have his audience, even though the audience will decline. But the reason why he doesn't really change because one, unfortunately, you're they're, they're scared when a guy, when a person becomes a big star in professional wrestling, they're going to go to Hollywood. And again, yes, that's something to be afraid of, but that means you got to create new stars. So they're afraid, they, they, they're going on this niche idea that no one's going to be bigger than the brand of WWE anymore. They're all about 50-50 and they don't want their mentalities, they don't want anybody being this high or this down. They want them to be in the middle. They want to be 50-50 basically, which is just, that is just not how things are supposed to be. That's not how wrestling shows supposed to be, but unfortunately, that's just how it is with freaking Triple H's regime of WWE. Or just in general with WWE with their mindset because they think that that's that's okay supposedly, you know, they still know that they need The Rock to draw ratings. They need all these wrestlers that are star power to draw ratings, but either they don't want to create new stars or then these people are going to retire. Cena is retiring next year. Undertaker's been retired. The Rock. Is a semi-retired wrestler, but he's they're lucky that he's still there. And honestly, he's probably gonna only be there because again, he is the final boss, which they really gotta take their blessings to know that the rock at least he'll be there to save the company a little bit, you know, to bring that little interest back. Um They they really gotta count their blessings with all the people they still have that are recognizable names. But at the end of the day, but that's also the real why they're keeping they're still being a little intrigued. Because they still have the stars that they can rely on. It's just like what's gonna happen in a few years when you have those stars that are developed and they and a lot of these stars do retire like Cena and Rock for good and whatever, what you're gonna do. But you know, that's how they can agree. They can rely on that and plus they have a better history than AEW. AEW has really no history. Their history is about fucking glorified indie garbage wrestling and also having these washed up WWE guys. I mean, at least with TNA, when they had the washed up WWE guys, they just pale comparisons to the ones that are in AEW currently. Like, I love Edge. Edge is one of my favorite wrestlers, but again, what is he doing besides being injured sadly? You know what I mean? Isn't that sad? Christian is there and he ain't doing even much anything in that show. And Chris Jericho fighting for the stupid ROH title. What are we doing here? You know, what are we doing? Where is the sense does this make with this show? I don't know. Like, I just think there's no proper booking. There's no proper stories. There's just a lot of shit. It's, but again, why even bother watching AEW when it's supposed to be a pal alternative? When you can... when just see that shit in WWE. You know what I mean, folks? You know what I fucking mean? Oh, shit. My glasses broke. <laughs> Anyways, oh, I, I can still manage to wake it up. Damn, guys. My glasses broke. <laughs> or, uh, actually, no, I can make it work. Oh, okay, yeah, this thing didn't break. Because I have to sadly glue this shit. Oh boy, I gotta get some that super glue. Oh boy. Okay, let's get this shit. Ah. Oh my god, let me see. Isn't this more fun to do? Just freaking try to fix my way to There's no point for this shit. Oh wow. I literally whatever. My reading glasses is has broken, folks. <laughs> Uh, but this is just fun. This is more funny than talking about shitty wrestling. My goodness. Well, we're gonna, while we fix my glasses, let's talk about shitty wrestling. But, um, yeah, well, again, why bother watching the stupid indie promotion or whatever when you could just watch the original shitty indie promotion, right? Or, let's say, more established indie promotion. Because at least that's what WWE has, is their history. And that's why p people will only care about WWE. It's because of how good their history was. You know what I mean? You can they can ride on the cocktail of their own history. And people will still care based on that. 
No one's gonna fucking care about AEW with their shitty history. Because they're, again, it's, they just started five years ago, and nothing much has progressed. They have gotten worse. They have gotten worse. Like, TNA has more of a history than freaking AEW. AEW, there's no real, real rise. It's just something that the smarts could pretend that, oh, this is better than WWE. Now they change their minds. People are saying they're fucking, they like the WWE because of this whole modern regime of Triple H and whatever. Because, you know, they have still some indie style bullshit. And they're still kind of appealing to the fucking smarts in a weird sense. Who the fuck's gonna really care? And I guess better, pro it's like better production even, you know, at least. But AEW, like, why even bother, you know? <laughs> why even fucking bother? And my glasses is broken. Yeah. Where is the fucking lens? Okay. This is broken, folks. Anyways, um. <sighs> So let's talk a bit the show there. Let's start the show. Because why the fuck not? Okay, let's start the show. Oh yeah. So So NXT and AEW, even though they had their Tuesday night war the, or, on this show, they basically were not really in war. They only were in war for an hour, apparently. They were only at war for an hour because um yeah, I don't know. So AEW base because I guess AEW they didn't even bother to put any intriguement on this show, or whatever. Even though they should, you're on a different night this week, and you're sh uh, you have a pay per view coming up. By logic, shouldn't people try to care? Shouldn't you try to make people care about your stupid fucking show? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, but like, yeah, but you have to understand, folks. Oh, but well, why AEW got an order deal with, it with uh, freaking TNT or, or Warner Bro? Again, they gotta count their blessings. You really think by design that AEW or not it, that Warner Bro want to give the money they did to AEW? They only did it because they need that they lost the NBA. The NBA decided they're going to go on another round. So they better count their blessings. That's another reason why they're no longer, like, why AEW got where they are. It's because of freaking NBA. They decided to go a different route with their, with their, whatever. Is it streaming or, you know, cable route? I don't know. They're, like, they're on another channel, apparently. So they better count their fucking blessings. That's for sure. Doesn't know how to like you know. They don't know how to basically uh, promote themselves in a sense or just whatever. But it's just all it's just all bullshit. But anyways, let's just talk about the fucking show, folks. So NXT started. Uh, NXT is we're gonna focus more first because again that's in a round before AEW. That has actually and that's a sad thing. AEW uh, uh, NXT as a developmental brand has more history than WWE. I mean, I mean than AEW. Just in general. Um, so we're going to start with NXT first because, and plus, that was like the show that was on even before uh, AEW. So it's a night because they want to be an, uh, an hour ahead or an hour after, whatever. So, the show started with. Um, so started with Trick Williams. He's calling himself Two Belt Trick or whatever, not Two Time Trick or something like that. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Whatever. Um. Shut up. I don't mean 
this three in the morning of freaking uh, okay. The trick will only start started the show celebrate how he's a two time NXT champion. You know, oh, yeah, I'm two time trick me and shit. That, that's basically what he said. Like, you know, I'm two time trick, trick me and shit. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Um, whatever. <laughs> you know, I mean, again, I think, you know, that's a funny. I, want, I also want to talk about this about uh, WWE. For all you people that say that Triple H is racist, listen, let's just admit this to ourselves. WWE in reality or wrestling in general just doesn't have a lot of good black stars, okay? Let's be honest, a lot of these black wrestlers are just not good. If people want to be honest with themselves, they're just not good, okay? They're not entertaining. But doesn't mean that guys like Trick Williams doesn't have something to offer. And Oba, even Oba Femi, let's talk about this. Oba Femi, uh, for instance, uh, has more promise. Okay, then a lot of these AEW, uh, a lot of these stars who are black. So you can't say that oh you know oh uh, you know they're WWE's races and blah blah blah. It's just they don't have the right amount of stars that they can showcase as black wrestlers. Sure, I'm very I do not like what they did with Bobby Lashley and MVP and whatever. But given that MVP could be some have some weird agenda, whatever. But at the end of the day, you can't go on to say that WWE's races when they just the proper timing. It's just to not showcase some certain stars. You shouldn't just showcase some wrestlers just because they're black. You know? It's just how it is. But again, look at NXT. It, Trick Williams is the black NXT is a black NXT champion. All but Femi who is a black North your black North American champion. Last week they had two black wrestlers as as their main champions on NXT. Sure, not anymore, but at the end of the day, at least they're being showcased. Like, look at the black wrestlers that are being showcased in NXT. So don't say that NXT is racist or Triple H is racist, you know? Oh, but why are you doing the main roster? It's just, maybe when Trick Williams go to the main roster, maybe you'll see that he's being showcased, because he does have some promise. Oba Femi has a hell of a lot of promise with his presence. And I like Oba Femi. Oba Femi, I will not forget the him, what he said to, like, that chick... Uh, that that he was it the mobster chick whatever her name is. Oh, you got let go. You got uh, uh, you got a shit app or something. Or sit and then like he says, uh, you know, uh, in my country, the woman is better to be seen, not heard. And all the fucking smarty fans or all these ner nerd and virgins like you can't talk about the woman. Like all these fucking. You know, they want to try to act like, you know, they're saving a woman and like, You can't talk about a woman that way, that's very misogynistic. Like, shut the fuck up, faggot. Tricky two... Okay, so, NXT opens with Tricky two time. Whatever. He tells what's in stores for tonight's show, but quickly interrupts by Wes Lee, who is gunning for the NXT Championship. They go, no, me and me now, I'm going to come after you. I'm gonna go come after you. I've done all, all I'm, I'm gonna come after you now. She. And after that, then Jay Uso shows up. Uh, Jay Uso comes out and says, I don't, I don't, don't eat and congratulate you, Uso. Whatever. I guess, you know, obviously, like, why is he there? Like, why is Jay Uso there? But obviously, you know, they're trying to incorporate to help put over the stars, right? So it's like, it's okay, whatever. The first match, Kalani Jordan, Jay Cargill, Bianca Belair defeats Fatal Influence, basically Toxic Attraction 2.0 in a weird sense. But like, it's definitely not the same charm as Toxic Attraction, sadly. But whatever. Um, it's a darn shame that they lost. Again, like, you can't say that WWE is racist. Maybe, you know that, I will say this though, it does seem like Vince McMahon well, you people that hate Vince McMahon, he is less racist than Triple H, or or he's again. Did they, they? You can't say that that Triple H is racist. I mean, or or not Triple H, fucking Vince McMahon, or the entire McMahon family is racist. I'm not saying that Triple H is racist. Okay, it's just all about timing, right? But come on, look at Vince McMahon. He pushed a lot of guys that were black. Okay, he wanted to push our truth because he was funny. He pushed Mark Henry. He pushed Booker T. 
He pushed, okay, the Rockets have black, oh, but, oh, but that doesn't count, whatever. Bobby Lashley was WWE champion for some time, and he was black. Like, what does that freaking tell you? It's just about the person and the timing. If they work, it works. It's all about timing, folks. But whatever, I mean, I don't care for, like, these chicks, uh, like, you know, Jade Cargill, Bianca, and Kalani, whatever, but, like, okay, they're, they beat Sadly, the attractive black, uh, the attractive bitches, but you know, but it's all for you know, race guys, race. Um, Roxanne Perez comes out says that uh, she goes about retaining her championships and she brings out Cora J. Says you know, uh, we decide to make everyone pay for forgetting about the, us, and we decide to let's rekindle our friendship because we are more like it. We enjoy what we are now. Uh, they get interrupted by Julia, and Julia showed, uh, like, you know, all how they, you know, no one can beat us or whatever, when we're unstoppable now, uh, and we're just better, blah, blah, blah. Julia comes out, and she brings out, uh, a friend, a new friend or whatever, and it's Stephanie Valcare. It's Stephanie Valcare, I ain't gonna lie, she's invited to be like, couch. Oh, shit, oh, shit, indeed. I mean, to be fair... I mean, I'm not too big on Asian chicks, but apparently, technically, Julia is also half Italian. All four of them. Hey, they're invited to the big black couch. <laughs> you know, like, you know, that, so at least that's something with a, with WWE, with NXT, and I like this about NXT. They're showcasing some hot chicks, you know, but they, which I give, I give that a lot of credit. That's a sad thing to know about AEW. AEW, they do have some hot chicks on the show, but they don't even use them. They rather use transgenders. Because they want to be woke and shit. Uh, the second match. Tony D'Angelo believed the, uh, Alba, Alba Femi. And he captures his first single championship, which is the North American Championship. This is definitely something like, you know, do do I think that like uh, Tony D'Angelo should have beaten him? Like, is it believable? I don't know. But at the end of the day, I'm just happy that at least two wrestlers who I do like, you know, no matter what, whoever won, I was going to be sold. I like, this match was good. This match was good. Okay, this match was good. These two are the future. I like this. Okay, so this was definitely a good match. I love Oba Femi. It's just a darn shame. That I do think, like, is Tony really the guy to beat him? I don't know. But at the end of the day, I'm just happy that a guy that is cool, who has a character and a persona, I have no problem at least with Tony D beating uh, Oba. So, Oba, I mean, but both of them are the future. I hope I hope good things for these guys in the future. I really do. I hope they actually become big stars. They are promised. Oba Femi, again, a black wrestler who has that promise. So, I really hope that good things come for him. Hopefully, this is just the beginning. All right? So, I put good on him being the, you know, North American champion, having his little run. And then, you know, he lost. But, like, uh, but, you know, hopefully he still looks great, like, coming after this, so. Good, good on Oba. Really, good, good on Oba. Faxiom, whatever the fuck they call themselves, is this Nathan Frazier and Oxiom, whatever. They defeat 8 Town Dart uh, under in a NXT tag team title match. I don't really care for this match, but whatever. Um... Ethan Page interrupts Sexy Red. Sexy, I, I don't who the fuck cares about Sexy Red. This fucking disgusting bitch was on fucking Raw and just was just being just ghetto trash. And she was good and, and good that she interrupts. So I will give this. I don't give a fuck about Ethan Page. Good on him. Then Javon Evans comes out and sends a message over uh, and sends, uh, whatever. He sends a message to Ethan Page, sending over the top with a clothesline, and, and they all twerking it. They're twerking, Michael! Oh, I'll look, I'll look, I'm twerking! We fight at, no, I don't, I don't know, we fight at the next developmental, Michael! Like, who the fuck cares? Like, seriously. Um, 
The main event of NXT, Randy Orton defeats Javon Evans, this fucking young guy. Again, the story, there's no story with this match. This match is like, oh, I want to fight Javon Evans in his hometown, both hometown, and he's an up and cover. I want to see if he, he's good enough, and I want to hit him with an RKO. Like, how, how, does, how is that storyline? I understand this is supposed to be some, you know, a show, big showing. For Javon Evans, because for some reason they think that this guy is the future. Again, no offense, but this guy really just comes off as like this modern Kofi Kingston guy. And this modern, again, it's really just a typical new skinny vanilla. I mean, he's just a black midget fucking version of all these vanilla midgets who just great. He has no character really. Like, I get it. Maybe in, over time he'll become something. But that's all it is. Like, what's so special about this guy? You know? Yeah, and now he had that rating on his face. Again, there's not like there's a story in this match. That's the problem. Um, whatever. I mean, they had their match. Uh, again, and the only thing that people think this is good for Javon is because get it? It's a good showing that even though he lost, he had a competitive match with Rainor, which how does that make any sense? For Orton, a veteran in his age, a veteran like him, who faced and beat guys like The Undertaker, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, John Cena, you know, all these big wrestlers, and he couldn't even beat this guy like this? Like, that makes him look weak. I'm sorry, it does. You know, and how does that make anything special nowadays when a wrestler, like, all of them can go with Randy Orton? Like, that's just stupid, okay? Oh, but he had a good showing. That's good for... That's stupid, okay? And they, they messed up on the RKO. They were supposed to do a big moment RKO. You know, I can't know again where if this guy jumps and whatever. But they didn't connect it. You know, there's a botch where or did not get to do the RKO. And then just picks him up the RKO right out of that. Um, the match was whatever. You know, I just didn't care. Because there's no story and this is dumb. But like, whatever. I mean, I'm just glad that Orton won, obviously. But like, it is what it is. And, you know, oh. It's okay, bud. You're the future. And show and you know, this is a showcase for him, which fine, you know, paying it forward, I get it, you know, uh, but at the end of the day, what does it I mean I they obviously did this because you know the ratings and to get people watching at NXT. You know, but it is what it is. Like and that's just the thing, like that's their stupid mindset. They think that this is a good showing or whatever. Like that's all that matters, even though that makes no sense. And Ava Ray announces that Javon Evans versus Wesley versus Ethan Page, and next week the winner will face Trick Williams at Howling Havoc. The guy just lost, and he's getting a no contenders match. How does that make any fucking sense? That makes no sense at all. Like, the fuck? Whatever. Anyways, the show. At least the show had something, you know? So the show wasn't terrible, I guess, for NXT. I mean, uh, I'm not saying, like, I, compared to last week was kind of better. I Actually, uh, but, like, I mean, this show still had, it still had that Tony D and Oba Femi match. Orton being there, I guess, was okay. And Stephanie back here, hello, what's going on? Even, I mean, Roxanne, sure. Not Roxanne, what's her name? No, Cora J. Cora J is definitely invited, even though she sadly seems like a, a 304, you know? Oh, all four of them. Hello. What's going on, ladies? Um, but ne let's move on to Dynamite, shall we? Dynamite, which looks like a fucking joke. Dynamite started with J John Moxley saying that not, 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 not many people realize the dark side of Brian Danielson. Uh, I, I gotta do this with the fucking broken glasses. You know, when Brian got in the ring, the American Dragon comes to life and he's a dangerous beast. But when you go back uh, to the, that dragon in your corner, it's becoming a life threat situation. Uh, you know, I don't want to face this beast, but I have no choice. You know, it has to, it has to be this way. Now, Soul Wash is going to stop me becoming the end of world champion. And one day, Brian, you will understand that you got it got to get this way, but stakes are too high. Again, why does this make any sense? Well, what's the stakes here? How does it make any sense? Like, what is this? Uh, obviously, this has got to build up to something, like some hidden agenda. But again, why is it, does it have me to even take out your own supposed buddy, you know? Not that I give a fuck, you know? 
It just is. It just shit just never been built up to. Who cares? You know. Then we see Darby Allen coming to the ring and he calls out Brody King for attacking him. So for Darby Allen, he has some open challenge and I'll get it some fucking rim job or collision, whatever. It was, uh, that's why I call Rampage rim job. So one of those shows, Brody King attacked him, and that's our big match that's gonna happen on our pay per view. Brody King was not showcased at all in recent memory, so why should we care that he's facing Darby Allen at a pay per view? And again, how does this make any sense storyline wise? And nobody really cares. Oh, but they're mentioning of their past, so as a, that that's not the story. That just making shit up or bu having bullshit happen. That's like a, a an angle, you know. That's not story to lead to a match. That just out of nowhere angle to lead to a match. Cliche. It's stupid. Brody King comes out and tells the story how he and Brody were in the Indies take, take, talking about being on TV someday. Yeah, that's all about, you know, getting, growing up being in the Indies. Nah, like, it's all stupid. Well, you are in, still in the Indies, pal. Three years later, Darby got signed to AEW and eventually got Brody slimed. And now Brody wants Darby's spot. He slaps, then Darby slaps Brody and Brody knocks Darby to the ground with a single forearm. He puts Darby in a sleeper, but... Darby pulls out a rock. He pulls out a rock and makes uh, Brody bleed. Who cares? Who the fuck cares? Uh, help me. Jake Roberts is returns to AEW television and he looks sick, sickly sad. I mean, that's a sad thing about Jake Roberts. I see that he does like but he does like meet and greets and he's sad he like he looks not good you know which I feel so bad for him like let the guy rest why is he on TV you know I mean maybe that's what they're doing you know cause literally guess, this, guess what happened folks guess what happens he's on TV and he has a trade away Lance Archers to the Don Callis families for God knows what reason yeah a guy who is literally a giant jobber who doesn't even, he's not even showcasing, he just shows up and loses. Okay. In return, Jake Roberts got, well, they don't say it yet. So apparently they traded, uh, they traded, they traded, um, talent to manage? Like, how does that make any fucking sense? And who the fuck cares? I don't fucking know. There's a mayor's contract in AEW, and I just, like, who the fuck? Danny Garcia is back on Dynamite and says, says he's back to me. I don't know. I'm not, not that I give a fuck. Um, Trink, apparent, Tranquilo Jake Roberts. Supposedly now he's the manager of Rush, Beast Mortis, and Track the Tasso. Which, who the fuck cares? Yeah, that's our big tri I don't fucking know. They need American. Uh, uh, who the fuck cares? <laughs> who the fuck? Cares like what? <laughs> He's gonna manage the Beast Mortis Rush and like I don't give a fuck. I don't even know what the fuck happened. Like whatever. Who did they beat and who cares? Anyways, on Dynamite also or is it before the second match? I think or the first match. I don't even know how what what fucking happened. Hologram. Who's hologram? Nobody fucking cares because nobody fucking watches Collision. They def he defeated Commander, and he's 14-0 and 0 or something. We see Danny Garcia says, I'm staying with AEW. Wow, what a big what a big ovation or big statement. Not that anybody fucking cares where you're fucking going, pal. You're just a fucking vanilla midget. Oh, Danny Garcia go to AEW, I mean WWE or something. No, stay where you're at, pal, because you ain't fucking entertaining at all. Go take your shitty chance and stay uh, stay there, please. Oh, I'm not the same I used to be. No more crying. No more just being entertaining. I'm here to for the future. And for anyone with a title in the back, I'm coming. I'm gonna be prove I'm a better wrestler. Great. So not the uh, oh great not don't be entertaining. Be a shitty vanilla midget boring fucking indie style wrestler bullshit. Whatever. Okay. Whatever. It's a nice that Swerve Strickland will make his return to Russell Dream. I mean, why? They just announced it. Like, can he just... What's, what's the point? Whatever. 
And MVP and Shelton Benjamin seems very interested in hearing this response. So what? They're gonna do something where like, oh, they're gonna try to in enforce him to be part of the new hurt business and whatever. I don't care. Wait, the Fat Wheel Nightingale wins a Fatal Four match to to face Mariah May at Wrestle Dream. And Mariah attacks her after the match. I don't even know what the fuck happened in this match. No, do I care? Let me switch over to the the different Facebook uh, page to see who what the fuck even happened to get some context. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, hologram got attacked. Where? No, they attacked. Uh, uh, both both hologram commander got attacked by by some stupid group, which is like them. I don't even know. Okay, Whale Nightingale defeated Soraya Knight, or it was just some page. Jamie Hayter and Nalo Rose. Oh, <laughs> see, I tell you. See what I tell you guys? Instead of showcasing hot chicks, they fucking showcase fat, fucking disgusting bitches and training looking bitches. Or trannies in general. Penelope Fords made a return in the match and cost Jamie Hayter the match for some reason. I mean... At least she's back. She's hot. You know, good for that. And But really, Paige is there and she's losing too. Like, what the fuck are we doing? What are we doing, folks? Whatever. Um. Ay, ay, ay. Jay White the, the challenges Hangman Paige to face him at Wrestle Dream. Even though, who, I mean, who fucking cares? Why does he want to Because the Hangman attacked his buddy or something? His retarded buddy, like, who the fuck cares? Mercedes Monet defeated Emmy Sakura, and then Chris Samus runs in to save em Emmy from the beat. No, wait, wait, Chris Samus saves Emmy? Huh? Isn't Chris Stanlander a heel? Like, did she turn heel? And then, like, what? What? See how confusing this shit is? And how stupid this shit is? You deserve your shit ratings. Oh yeah, later on in the show, we see Flat Whale Nightingale, the fucking Flat Whale. She pushes the fucking attractive Mariah May and, I don't know, look like she hurt her. Yeah, great. That's what we gotta do too. Uh, you know, I don't fucking care. I don't know. We then see... Real Osprey calls out Don Callis and like, asks, like, w w w that if you said take a shit, or take shit, take a shit, whatever the fuck. And then, like, uh, Callis admits that, uh, yeah, I did. It's because, you know, you cost the, us the tag titles. And Callis says, you know, you had, to, uh, you ha I had the greatest wrestler in the world, and you threw in the trash all for yourself or something, you know. I, I had the biggest wrestler, but I do it for you, which is, I guess, he referred to Kenny Omega or something. You know, and I'm not done, uh, you know, uh, you, and then Osprey says, I'm done with you. And then Callus slaps Osprey in the face before Osprey could attack him, take his shit, attacks him or whatever, and Callus Flash, uh, Fletcher, runs out and says, I'm conflicted. I don't know, he's conflicted, and the ricochet comes out that helps Osprey clear the ring, and I don't. That's just stupid, whatever. And the main event, Ryan Danielson and Wheeler Yuta defeat Claudio and Pac. Brian was taken out early in the match, but then Yuta had to, like, get beat up, basically. By the time the match was over, Brian then attacks uh, Moxley. Uh, because and Moxley him brawled backstage to the arena or whatever. And then... Um, you, you just like being held down by Claudio and what, what is it Cesaro and Pac and then eventually uh, Yuta gets attacked with the hammer he gets attacked with the hammer and then Brian goes back in the ring and, which again this brawl looks stupid and fake by the way him and Moxie brawling just looks stupid and fucking retarded and then he gets into the fucking uh, ring and Oh, he clears house, even though they have a fucking hammer. And then he saves Yula, Utah, whatever. And the show ends with the stupid final countdown theme. Yeah, yeah, waste your money with the final countdown theme rather than, I don't know, for helping the show get better or something. I don't fucking know. 
do I care? Um, so that was AEW. Wow, did that fucking show look stupid? That main event I saw was just fucking shit. Not that, and I didn't care. And yeah, a show that's called Title Tuesday, and no titles are on the line. I understand you got a pay-per-view coming up, but like, I don't know. Do something, like, with titles uh, up this, like, you, you know, wrestling is stupid too. I mean, I understand. It's stupid even calling this Title Tuesdays and whatever, but if you're going to do something, why not, I don't know, have some implications that would lead to the pay-per-view? Like I said last week, why not have done something where Brian, instead of having Brian Okada last week for the title, why not have done instead of this week, you know, with the titles online? Last week, you could have done something with Moxie and Brian where they're going to have a title match, but they end in no contest. And whatever happens this week leads to Moxie getting his own ultimate rematch, but with a stipulation, you know? But whatever, man. This whole show is stupid, you know? They don't know how to book a wrestling. Uh, this is just indie glorified dumb indie shit. Um, Tony Khan is doing what the fuck he's doing. Whatever, just retard shit. I don't know. Overall, I mean, I don't really care for NXT. I think NXT is you know just again developmental dumb shit. But whatever. I mean, it's managed to be better than fucking AEW and it has a little bit more sense. I mean, so that show was whatever. And again, it had the Obi Femi and Tony D match, which was good. Other than that, I mean, you know, it's whatever. You know, stars were there. At least that's something they can rely on. And AEW was just nonsensical booking. You know, that's all I have to say. And it's glorified indie shit that was just, just dumb. And shit that I don't give a fuck about. That's that's AEW. AEW was just shit. And we have a pay-per-view coming up. And then they see it's just, you know, they don't really have to worry about anything. Because, again, they're trying to, you know, make people care about the CW stuff. You know, them beyond CW. That's all I'm going to say. Just keep real. Get your gains. Get your drink your coals magnificently, which I have right here. And it's probably some bitch go, oh, shit, shit. I didn't drink my cola at the moment because I took some supplements. Um, so, I can drink it now, though, you know. That's all I'm going to say. Until next time, peace. Yeah, bye. Just a joke. This Tuesday night war was not even a war anyway, so it's like, what a joke. It's some effort. It was just a one hour, like, off from each other, and nobody really cares. Until next time, peace. Yeah, bye. What a joke that just wrestling in general nowadays, especially with AEW.